Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Disneyland Show podcast. I'm your host, Nathan. And I'm your host, Adam. Today, we're starting a new series called Pitch It. That's the current title. Where we pitch our own ride ideas to each other and hopefully you guys as well. And if you have any ride ideas or you have any suggestions, send them over to tdspodcastman at gmail.com. Or you can always just check us out on Instagram at the Disneyland Show Podcast. We do also have a YouTube channel where you can listen to the show on YouTube as well as we will have some YouTube exclusives. The Disneyland Show Podcast also found in the description of this episode. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's about it for now. Yeah. All right. So basically we made our own ride ideas and uh, that we kind of want to see in the parks eventually or in Disneyland eventually. Um, yeah. So that's the idea for this series. So it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So should we just should we just jump right into it? I think we should. Okay. So I start, right? Yeah, you yeah. start. Okay. So for my first ride idea, I so I've seen so you know the Lion King movie that came out over the summer, right? The the, the remake. Action. Yeah. The yeah. Semi live yeah. action. Yeah, so it it has its Blu-ray release date coming up, and um, and I th- I thought you know watching the movie, I thought that a really cool ride in the parks would be a, a 2019 quote unquote live action themed Lion King roller coaster, or at least an indoor roller coaster. Mm-hmm. So so my first idea here is uh, the Lion King, the Battle for Pride Rock, or something along the lines of that title. Or Lion King, whatever, but it's a it's a Lion King themed roller coaster. So pretty much the my inspirations for this ride come from Indiana Jones, Splash Mountain, Big Thunder, and Credit Coaster, and Radiator Springs Racers, all for different kinds of elements. Um, so yeah, it's just I'm just gonna start explaining it. Okay. So the ride entrance is Pride Rock, so it's the big basic mountain yeah. that you enter. So you walk through narrow hallways of just small corridors, uh, kind of like Indiana Jones queue, to get to the loading platform. There's no pre-show or anything. You just hop right into the ride, which is now located behind um, Pride Rock. So you basically just walk through through the, the rock. Yeah. So now the, the ride starts. You sit in a vehicle that's in a lion. So it's kind of it's a, it's a lion. Um, so you go up a lift hill. And while the circle of life is playing, so you crest the hill, and there it is. You get a, your first huge show scene, which is the opening scene of the movie with Rafiki, the presentation of Simba. So you get that. Um, so then you slowly bank left into a small dark tunnel, which is going up another lift hill. So then you, this is kind of where you hear Simba talking to Nala about an elephant graveyard that Scar told him about. So then you, so then Simba asked Nala, hey, you want to go to the elephant graveyard? But then they have to make it up that they're going to the watering hole. And then Simba's mom tells to bring Zazu. So, yeah. And then you drop. There's the first small drop. They drop into the I Just Can't Wait to Be King show scene, which is another large one. It's not nearly as big as the um, presentation of Simba one, but it's still, still large. And after that, you speed around a corner into the be prepared scene, except it's kind of a modified version of it where Scar is saying that is like he's explaining his plan on what he's and what he's going to do. So he's going to say, we're going to get a stampede and everything because you won't actually see Mufasa's death. You don't see any of that. You just kind of get the dialogue of it. So then you end it, you then enter the gorge scene, which where Mufasa dies. And that's where Simba's frame for the death. And then the first launch happens after Scar says to Simba to run away. So then you launch, you go up and down sand dunes, you go twist and turn around the desert, and then the ride, and then it stops. And then where you, you look to your right, and you see Simba lying on the ground. And then Timon and Pumbaa rush across, and these are all animatronics. And then they help him, they explain to him Akuna Matata, and then uh, then you basically get jumped into the Akuna Matata scene. And you walk with them, you're going with them. But the main focus of this part is the log. So you know how they walk across the log and it's their silhouette and they kind of start dancing across the moon. Yeah. 
So you're behind them when you're when they're doing that. Okay. Um, so then you turn to then reveal Simba is, of course, an adult. And then he reunites with Nala, Timon and Pumbaa are seen shaking their heads as Can You Feel That Love Tonight starts playing. So then you drop into the show scene of the, the song. So then after that, Nala explains to Simba that Pride Lands are basically just done for. So Nala goes off and Simba does see Rafiki running through the forest. So then you do another small launch here, twisting through the trees and the grass and everything, like the forest to the big reflection scene where you see Mufasa and like Simba's like, you got to remember who I am and stuff. And then a huge Cloud Mufasa saying to remember who you are and all that kind of jazz. So Simba remembers and tells Rafiki that he's going to go back to challenge Scar. So then you launch back into Pride Rock and you battle Scar, this time taking a space mountain approach as you twist and turn in the dark, seeing the fight briefly in various flashes. Uh, this lasts about 10 to 15 seconds, roughly. Then Scar is defeated, and then the last huge show scene happens when Simba is on Pride Rock roaring up into the gray sky. Mufasa starts saying, remember, and that's, that's about it. And a small drop back into the, the loading platform. Another important fact that's based on the 2019 one, uh, each train can seat about 14 to 16 people. This, I'm thinking this ride would be good in Adventureland because it kind of has that Adventureland feel of Pride Rock. Mm -hmm. And also, a new restaurant would be attached because I think that's a good idea, having a Lion King-themed restaurant. And uh, that's, that's about it. That's the Lion King ride that I came up with. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So, yeah. do we talk about that now or do we just jump into mine? Because we're so new at this as well. Yeah. Um, well, do you want... I mean, that's about the entire ride. There's nothing really to add to it. Yeah. So... Should we just jump into yours now? We're just going to keep going back and forth. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, Phineas and Ferb, you know that iconic Disney TV show, right? Everyone, <laughs> everyone does. And yeah. if you don't, I'm sorry, you need to watch it. And best part about Phineas and Ferb, Perry the Platypus and Dr. Doofenshmirtz. So, yes. I was thinking, based off of, it would be like the same type of ride as Buzz Lightyear Astro Blaster, so it'll be like a dark ride with physical sets, but mix, but it has like the guns and stuff. And anyway, uh, the, you would just, I think this would be a ride for Toontown because since it's a cartoon, it wouldn't fit anywhere else because it's not futuristic enough, even though it does have these inventions, Dr. Schmertz, it's not futuristic enough to be in Tomorrowland. Not Adventureland, obviously not Fantasyland, so that's kind of like all it would be in would be Toontown, because mm -hmm. I don't see it being in California Adventure. It wouldn't fit in anywhere there either. So I, I was thinking you would start off in the, your cue would be you start off by walking into the organization without a cool acronym, which is where, which is the organization of secret agent animals that pe pets, I mean, that Perry fights for. And anyway, it just starts off by, you know how in Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters where they have the actual Buzz Lightyear animatronic there, like briefing you? Mm -hmm. It'll be like that, except it's just going to be a screen, like in Perry's. And then, so you enter the organization with a cool acronym, but then you go into Perry's secret base underneath. And... You're getting briefed by Major Monogram and Carl from the screen because we're cut, this ride's going to be based off just like a normal episode of Phineas and Ferb, the, the Perry the Platypus scenes, but it's going to have like its own unique innator and stuff. So anyway, you go through the, uh, you go through the queue. There's really not that much. You're just looking around, seeing like the physical set of Perry the Platypus's actual secret secret agent like base then you uh your ride vehicle can fit four people two in the front two in the back and it's based off of perry the platypus's car that he uses flying car in one of the first episodes it's right, like yeah. that white car with like the was it like teal and orange accents on it yeah yeah and anyway 
it's just not it's just gonna be like a standard type not like an actual gun but like a blaster but anyway you head into physical showrooms of just a standard episode of Perry the Pla- of Phineas and Ferb, which with Perry the Platypus and Dr. Doofenshmirtz, you will start by Perry being trapped and you have to free him in the first showroom. There will be, and then there could be like, you so you have to free him. And Doc, and I didn't explain this before, but Dr. Doofenshmirtz has the anti-fun or like, the Saturnator, and he wants to blast that onto the Disneyland park and t- make <laughs> everyone depressed and take over the park so the tri-state area. And so you go through all these different showrooms that basically depict a normal Perry the Platypus versus Dr. Doofenshmirtz fight, helping Perry out um, with uh, helping Perry out escaping his traps, fighting Dr. Doofenshmirtz, destroying the innator and of course there has to be a backstory scene at the start there has to mm-hmm. it's not it's not a dr doofenshmirtz scene without a backstory <laughs> <laughs> yeah as a child and this is the backstory as a child back in Druselstein, his parents made him be a garden gnome and so he was depressed with that stuff because he lost friends along the way like Baloney, for example. So he wanted to make everyone else suffer and feel that in Disneyland, which is supposed to be the happiest place on earth. He wants to suck all that happiness out of the out of the park so he can run it and essentially be the next Walt Disney. <laughs> and <laughs> this is such a this is such a <laughs> anyway, so you go through the several show scenes and there's gonna be several targets around the show scenes with like how do I describe this like there's several targets around and but they're not just placed everywhere like Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters they're placed in lots of places but they're things that would like you could see like help parry out like like the back of his trap for example like you shoot that and then it frees him type thing they would just be kind of like they wouldn't be, like, the best, like, still figures to just, like, those 2D-type ones in Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters because mm-hmm. they'll just be moving, like, back and forth and stuff because they don't have to be, like, the most advanced animatronics in this ride. And anyway, you go through all that, and then you come back out at, at the... You come back, you fly out into the sky, and you fly over Phineas and Ferb's backyard... And you hear them say, there you are, pa- oh, there you are, Perry. And then it kind of just ends. You, get th- you go back to OWCA and they thank you for your service. And you see your score and how, like, what level you were. Like, ta- elite agent as, like, would be, like, one of the highest. And then, like, rookie would be one of the bottom scores, for example. Hmm. Yeah. That's that's actually a really good ride. You know, it'd be a lot of fun. It would be fun, but I had kind of trouble explaining it because there's like I couldn't really like like with the Lion King ride that you just pitched. Like that would be like set. The thing is, with this ride, it's it was harder for me to like describe it because there's so much like possibility for it. Like mm-hmm. with the showrooms, for example, like you don't really know what to expect until it until it was actually until it would actually be like made and stuff. Because with Phineas and Ferb, since they made it such like a standard show, it can literally be anything going on. Because you've seen those, some of the episodes that were just really weird and crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, w- I honestly would really like to, to see that happen. <laughs> that seems like a lot of fun. I, I, I like those shooter rides, like, not like shooter rides, but like, kind of like friendly competitions, like Toy Story Ma- Midway Mania and Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters. Yeah, they're really fun. And then also just the the art style. Even in Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters, yeah. it's very unique. Mm-hmm. And, like, taking that to Phineas and Ferb would be a really good idea. Yeah, and keep in mind, like, it would be good, too, because Phineas and Ferb is coming back with a movie on Disney+. Plus, mm-hmm. And I believe it's the 
fourth or fifth anniversary coming up on November 9th. So, right, yeah. yeah, it would be a good, it would be a good time to be made type thing. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like it's coming, like bringing... it's becoming more relevant. Yeah, they're bringing it back. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, I'd, I'd like to ride that eventually. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, just like Dr. Doofenshmirtz in the park would be hilarious. <laughs> you could buy a Dr. Doofenshmirtz Disneyland t-shirt. Or the Mickey, <laughs> Mickey Mouse ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just have Doof's head just on that. That would be amazing. <laughs> be hilarious. Okay, so my second ride now is uh, since I still don't think we have there's enough roller coasters in the park. Uh, is yet another roller coaster. Okay. Um, this one's in vein of Star Wars, so it's a Star Wars dueling roller coaster, as I'm calling it, Star Wars Galactic Collision. Okay. So once again, I kind of drew inspiration off of the Lion King roller coaster when I was thinking about that. I got this idea. So this would be in Galaxy's Edge since mm-hmm. Galaxy's Edge is kind of empty right now, and even when they will put Rise in, it's not not much in there. Yeah. So I think having another another attraction in there is a, is definitely a good idea. So pretty much the idea of this ride is there are there are two ride tracks. There's one which is an X-wing and one that's a Tie Fighter. If you're in the X-wing, you're tasked with going around Batu to get information on the land because. As of right now, it's currently overrun by the First Order. Um, Mm -hmm. So, and then if you're a TIE fighter, you find the X-Wing that's kind of circling around Batu, and you have to chase it down. So, the entrance to the ride is is just in the area where Rise is going to be. It'll probably be across from Rise. So, you enter a highly guarded area where there is no pre-show at all. You just go straight into the loading platform where you either go on an X-Wing or a TIE fighter. This you can actually choose where you want to go. They'll ask you, um, but uh, if if it's a busier day, they'll just kind of load you on. Mm-hmm. Um, so once you're boarded, this is the X-wing side. The X-wing will go through the lift hill with the original characters, so Leia, Han, Luke, and Chewie, telling you that you're entering a highly controlled Imperial or uh, First Order area. So you jump to hyperspeed. And then exit, now looking to the right to see the TIE Fighter. So then we're going to jump back to the TIE Fighter. So once you board, the TIE Fighter will go up a lift hill with Darth Vader and the Emperor, telling you their plan to control the galaxy and that all rebels will be dead and blah, 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 generic Star Wars stuff. So you don't go to light speed, but you still see the X-Wing. So then both wait a few seconds when they're, they're right next to each other, and then you blast off, chasing each other over Batu. The guns are heard as the coaster twists and turns, changing positions of each train. So the X-Wing will go in front. The TIE Fred will be shooting at it. Maybe even some little mist will come out every now and then. Mm-hmm. Um, and then near the, end of the, near the end of this, where you're kind of going around Batu and going down near ground level and stuff, you dive toward the Millennium Falcon, the one that's outside Smuggler's Run. Like you go straight down or as straight down as you'll go. And which prompts both trains to separate from one another and go back into the loading platform. So the X-wing ending will say, "Like thanks for your, thanks to you, your valuable data uh, collected from Batu will be used to gain a better understanding of the area, or something like that." And the Tie Fighter will have like the Emperor just mad at you and Darth Vader standing there or something. And uh, that's that's that ride. So each train would probably set about twenty people or so. Okay. That's a it's a fast loading big ride yeah so that's that's what i was thinking so yeah yeah um and since it's going around uh batu and you i would personally like to see uh star tours cameo in there as well just like in smuggler's run yes have the yeah. uh, start star tours come up you know that'd be that now that would be epic. But the one be thing that i would that saddens me about that rise because I also really love like the original cast of Star Wars. But yeah. The sad thing is, if this was to be a ride, which I personally think would be a good idea for it, because like that's those are two of the most iconic ships in Star Wars, and a dueling roller coaster is a good idea for especially for Disney because it could hold double 
as many people per ride than say if like Space Mountain was a dueling roller coaster, the ride times would have been cut in half because there would be two times the people going in at once. Mm-hmm. But uh, since Galaxy's Edge does take place after eight and between eight and nine, would I feel it kind of sucks because they would probably put like Finn and Poe in there instead of like. Instead of like yeah. Luke and Leia, that type yeah. of thing, which kind of, which kind of does suck. But at the same time, with Star Tours, it has multi it has multiple different people. Like it has Kylo Ren sometimes, it has Vader sometimes. So I could also see them doing something like that where they change it up each time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It can kind of just change everything around if you want to. But Chewbacca's in there all the time, so that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah just keep keep chewing in. Just keep chewing in. Chewy R2 and C3PO. Those guys. Yep. We need, we need them. <laughs> the Chads. <laughs> yes. Okay, so... My turn. Yeah, it's my turn. Okay. So, yes. sticking with my TV show theme, uh, we are... And, oh my, sticking with my TV show theme, we're going to head over to Adventureland and... I'm trying to base it off of a DuckTales attraction because mm-hmm. DuckTales Reboot 2018 is starting to make that show popular again. And <laughs> also the original DuckTales is coming to Disney Plus as well. Yeah. So newer audiences will be watching it and enjoying the show. So there's that. It would be another good time to make it. It would either be an Adventureland or tomorrow, or uh, Adventureland or... Toontown, but probably Adventureland because while it is a cartoon, it does fit in more with the adventuring. And so it's going to be a Star Tours like a simulator attraction. So it's just so it's going to be a fast paced motion simulator. And the queue is actually going to take you through um, uh, Scrooge. I'm blanking on the name. I think it's uh, McDuck Manor, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yes, yeah, McDuck, McDuck Manor. McDuck Manor. And, uh, um, and you might be thinking it won't really fit. That won't really fit in with Adventureland, but the ride itself will fit in with Adventureland. And so I'm thinking it would take, it would go where, you know, Aladdin's Oasis, right? That's where yeah. the washrooms are. Uh, it's near. It's kind of near the Tiki Room. Uh, so yeah, it, that place is never used. So like two washrooms in there, boy and girl. You could really change that out and make a room for another attraction. Because let's be honest, Adventureland is really cool, but there's not as many attractions in there. There's Jungle Cruise, Indiana Jones, Tiki Room, and. There's only one fast-paced attraction in there, which is Indiana Jones. It would make sense to have another fast-paced attraction in there, I think. Yeah. And the Lion King one, if we're going off of our rides. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, so you just walk around McDuck Manor, and you, as you're going along, you're looking at everything around there. But you can also hear Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Scrooge, and sometimes Launchpad and Donald talking in the background. Like, you hear them just, like, Speak, speaking like nonsense that doesn't really have anything to do with the story, just like dialogue that would be based off their character. And once you head into the attraction, uh, you will first, when you're standing in your lines to go through your rows, you'll get a briefing by either the triplets, Scrooge, Scrooge, the triplets, or Scrooge and Launchpad. But and then the ride vehicle would actually be Scrooge's plane. So you'd walk <laughs> into there, and then the uh, thing would... you get, like, a little pre-show. Like, it shows, like, the, pre- the plane getting ready to take off and stuff. And when the barrier goes down, you see your pilot, which is going to be an animatronic of um, Launchpad McDuck, because Launchpad is a pilot. And it makes and it makes sense for him. It makes the most sense for him to be the one being your pilot. But there will still be a Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Scrooge cameo in the 
in the ride itself. And this is going to be the thing I love about these uh, simulator attractions is they can be extremely versatile and there's a lot of variety for them. So just like Star Tours, there could be multiple different scenarios. Like, for example, Star Tours, you could head to like Tatooine, Hoth, Endor, all those uh, plants from original trilogy, plants from the prequels and plants from the new and plants from eight, seven, eight, nine. And this time, it wouldn't be plants. It will just be different adventures that the triplets go in on the TV shows, like, mat- like for example, mountains or Egyptian-themed, themed, um, Egyptian-themed, uh, blanking on the word, scenarios. And there would be lots of interactions with the triplets as well. And... It will essentially just be, like, you guys giving support throughout the air. And also, like, for example, let's just use the desert, for example. You'll have, you will be, like, accidentally crashing into, like, the temple and stuff. And this is another hard ride for me to explain just because of all, like, the scenarios that you can get yourself into. Because I'm a big fan of the rides that you never know what you're going to get. Like Star, That's why Star Tours is one of my favorite attractions. A, because it's Star Wars. And B, because you'll always... Chances are, your trip at Disney, you won't get the same attra- You won't get the same ride one, twice. And then, anyway, you leave it. And once again, the triplets and Launchpad and Scrooge, thank you for your help on... Say, on whatever the hell they were doing. Uh, the, the Blast Shield, Star Wars terms, would, would pop back up. The right side of your ride vehicle would open up and you'd leave the manor. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that certainly works in Adventure Line. Yeah. More than, more than anywhere in the park. Mm. That would be a lot of fun, actually, because, yeah... Like Universal is primarily screen based now, but if you think about it, Dis- Disney doesn't have a whole lot of screen based attractions. Yeah. So I think this one would be good, and like you said, right now is a or even with Phineas and Ferb, now would be a great time because more and more people are going to become familiar with the with the franchise. Yeah. Yeah, that that'd be a lot of fun. There was you watched the first season of the new Ducktales, right? Yeah. So the the last episode, they go to this island, or one of the last episodes. Mm-hmm. They go to that the island. Forgot what it's called, but they're looking for something, and they meet this like Hercules duck thing. Yeah, um, that would be kind of a cool place to go. Mm-hmm. And one question: Would it be? Would it still be in the style? Would it be in two D animated, or would it be three D, like three D animated? Well, you know how. And I'm going into video game terms here, so so sorry if you don't know what I'm talking about. But have you seen Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong, uh, uh, Donkey Kong Island on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System? Yep. Yeah. So you know how it's 2D, right? But they yep. made it look 3D. Yeah. <laughs> they'd stick with it and make they'd stick with it, but it would look kind of awkward on the screen 2D. So they would make it 2D, but add some dimensions to kind of make it, to give it the illusion of it also being 3D. 3D. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that that makes sense. So it'd be kind of like Mickey Mini Runaway Real, like yeah. two and a half D. Uh, okay. I also forgot to mention, there would also be a gift shop attached to this at the end of After You Ride, and it'll still be inside of uh, Scrooge's Manor, so... And it would kind of be like, for example, you could get, like, like more of, like, you could get more accessories for, like, DuckTales and Donald. And, for example, this is just an idea. You could get a, some Mickey hat, some Mickey ear hats, but they have, like, gold and silver ears for, with coin prints on them. Ooh, yeah. And, like, like the DuckTales, little, like, du- a DuckTales, like, s- signia could be on the front. Just like some variations of some pre-existing souvenirs 
for the DuckTale fans. Yeah, because the, there are still a lot of DuckTale yeah. fans. Um, and that was your last ride idea, right? Yeah, because I was trying to think of another one for Bugs, La- for Bugs Life because Bugs Land closed for Marvel Land. And I wanted to try and fit something into Pixar Pier. But Bugs Land, I'm sorry. It's a good movie, but there's not much to base a ride off of. Well, everyone yeah. was complaining with Bugs Land's rides are boring and just reskins of, like, carnival rides. What they want them to do? They could have made like a like a. Like, it's tough to be a bug. Was probably like the best thing they could have done for that movie's attractions. It it was hard to find something, and I was almost just gonna come here and say, uh, "Hey, how about we just uh, put Heimlich's Choo Choo Train into into a uh, Pixar up here?" But I do have another idea. I don't know if you've heard of this ride. It's called the People Mover. I think Ooh. they. I think they should make a ride called the People Mover and put it into t- into Tomorrowland because there's some tracks sitting up there from a previous attraction, also called the People Mover. That's a fan favorite, and everyone wants it back. Yeah, no, I think that that would work on every level imaginable. Yeah, you know? that was by far my best idea for making it for an attraction. Brand new, totally, totally original, totally original. Yeah. No, no prior Disney knowledge no. required. <laughs> okay, so I guess the the last ride we're talking about here then is is mine, which I think is is probably my best ride. I, I'm guessing your best ride that you just said was um obviously people know. <laughs> oh yeah, people know for sure. <laughs> but um, so there is this there's this little little Pixar movie that came out. Um, but it was it's ten years old. It's a little movie called uh, Up. I'm not sure if you've heard about it. It was only nominated for Best Picture, you know. No, Nathan, tell me more about this movie Up. So Up is pretty much about an old grumpy man traveling to South America with a little annoying kid. Um, yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know about you, and I don't know about all of you listeners, but that movie connected to me emotionally when I saw it because that was that was a movie I actually saw opening night in Disneyland, and that that will always stick with me. Um, so I thought, hey, we need an up ride. So I came up with with this up dark ride idea where it'd be kind of a combination of of everything that Disney's known for: so cool sets, um, interactive environments and just an overall sense of adventure so before i actually talk about the ride that no this will not go into adventure land this is this is either going to go into toontown or pixar pier one I or imagine, the other i imagine pixar pier uh yeah that's probably a better home for it um so here's the ride so you enter through carl and ellie's house that's the main queue area now, you go upstairs into Carl's bedroom where the pre-show takes place. And no, it is not that kind of pre-show. Um, Carl, Russell, and Doug appear on a TV screen telling you what's about to happen. You're going on a trip or you're going to take off in this house to South America. Uh, they warn you about Charles Muntz and his blimp and that he's known to chase down other explorers because uh, he's looking for Kevin the Bird. Uh, Carl says that they will stay with you on the journey at all times so that you're completely taken care of and that you're good to go. So you leave the pre-show through a secret door that's not even in the movie just because they need an extra door. So you leave the area and you go into the loading area where you enter your house. Now, the house goes up a lift hill because, yes, this will have slight roller coaster elements to it. All around you is blue. Now, what I didn't tell you was that this would also be in vain of Roger Rabbit, where in the middle or in the front row, there is a wheel where you can turn your house around to look at the environment around you. Uh, So Carl tells you to keep a steady course um, straight on. So you peek around and see a huge thunderstorm ahead, and in the movie, Russell calls, basically just rants to Carl about what it's it's called, so he does the same thing to you. So you enter the thunderstorm, and you twist and turn, and you go up and down, wind blowing in your face. Then you steady out, and you begin to descend, but really fast it's almost too fast so you go down and then you hit the ground which looks completely different than what you're used to 
the clouds drift apart and then you see that you're in South America. Now this is a physical set that you're going to be in, no screens. Carl and Russell are, are pulling you along until you look back and up to see Charles Muntz's blimp now chasing after you. So some of the balloons begin to pop and you hit the ground. Like, you just completely hit the ground, you stop. Carl and Russell tell you to get out of your house. Now, this part, I think, is, is something that I really want to see happen in some Disney ride, in a dark ride, where just in the middle of the ride, you get out and then you get to look around. So you, you, so you get out of your house and you walk through South America. So there's like a pre-designated trail that you walk along through this environment. You see a huge animatronic of Kevin walking around and other various dogs of Charles Munson's, so like Alpha and, um, shoot, they're the, the, the main trio that Charles has. Mm-hmm. So after this area is complete, Carl and Russell tell you that, they, that they've reinflated a bunch of balloons or something like that. So then after you board your house and then you try to outrun Charles since he's right behind you. Now this is a real blimp, but it will just look appear bigger than it actually is. So you're chasing, or he's chasing you, he's shooting at you, you have the, the uh, what are they called, the, um, the dogs on the fighter jets, or the fighters, they're chasing after you, they're yeah. firing at you, everybody's trying to get you down. But you successfully outrun them, and you go back to Disneyland, which is where the house is, and, um, and then you're done. So yeah, this is a Roger Rabbit style ride that's themed to up in Pixar Pier. So that's my idea for an up attraction. Now, <clears throat> I like that idea. I, I think it's sort of like a unique idea to like when you get out of the attraction, and I'm assuming like there would be like not just like Carl telling you like, oh, hey, why don't you get out, look around? There would also be like something in the ride vehicle, like yeah. for example, like so, like a. Not a button, but like it says, uh, you may now get out of the vehicle. And then when you act, when he says it, it like flashes like yellow or something. Yeah, yeah. Because even though he says it, there are still some people who wouldn't really understand. Understand? No, they wouldn't get out. Yeah, no, they wouldn't get out. <laughs> but that's also why so I'm guessing somebody will also be there to monitor everything. Yeah, There's a couple of cast members in there. But um, yeah. So that's that's that then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Would there be so any that... gift shops attached to it or anything? No, no. no there's enough gift shops in yeah. Pixar Pier anyway. You can buy almost anything there. So that's about our first episode of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Thank you all for listening. Um. If you have any of your own ride ideas, make sure to. Share them with us once again to tdspodcast one gmail dot com. Also check us out on Instagram at the Disneyland Show Podcast. Uh, we've got our YouTube channel, Disneyland Show, where we'll be posting uh, episodes on there. Not all the episodes have been put up. I've been meaning to do that, and we're going to definitely be trying to crank out some content on there. Um, yeah, so stay tuned in the future for more more content. So yeah, yeah. All right, so this is. Disneyland show uh, signing off. See ya. So long.